Uh, my name is Leo, this is Denise. Uh, we will be talking about, our talk is called Who Stole My CPU? We'll be talking about steal time in DigitalOcean. We work at uh, DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a public cloud provider. We are providing developers and businesses with a reliable, easy to use cl uh, cloud computing platform of virtual servers, we call them droplets, and object storage spaces and more. Uh, the team that we are on is uh, systems engineering. We are responsible for hyper hypervisors in our fleet. Essentially for everything above the level of hardware and below the first party uh, services that are, that are responsible for things like uh, spawning virtual machines. We will be talking today about the historical evolution of our thinking about steal time on our, on our hypervisors. Uh, first of all, we will talk about what, what is steal, just for, for the sake of completeness. Then we will talk about what causes steal and, uh, and how we, we categorize steal that we are seeing to establish a framework of, uh, uh, for the further discussion. Then we will talk about mitigation of steal. First, we will talk about uh, kernel heuristics that uh, we found that, that, that caused steal, and, uh, uh, and then we will talk about implementation. Uh, the implementation will be, uh, we'll be talking about a user space demon that runs on our hypervisor, which, which is called Octopus, and the challenges that we ran into while, while implementing Octopus. First of all, what is steal? Uh, when you uh, open a tool like top uh, perhaps perhaps because of the uh, you're investigating a performance problem on your virtual machine you will typically see the CPU time categorized into several c categories such as uh, IO weight system user uh, one such category is the steal time uh, steal time in, in virtual in environment means that uh, that's the time that uh, your virtual CPU waited to, to, to receive a, a physical CPU to run on. Especially, the, essentially that's the time that it spent uh, sitting in a run queue. From the perspective of the, the, the hypervisor, a vCPU is just another OS task, so, so it, can lo it can lose CPU. Uh, when it happens from the perspective of the guest, the time just stops. Uh, still exists only uh, only within the virtual machine. If you look on the physical machine, the steel is always zero. Another uh, another side note that I forgot to mention: uh, we had a kind of an internal discussion when we were preparing for this talk. If steel can be used as a noun, we say a steel. It's a, I, I'm not sure how widespread it is, but, but we do say a steel. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure. If, like we, we couldn't reach a, reach a conclusion. Anyway, back to to steel to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, since the, the, the process of preemption of guests, the guests have no control on, of, then it means that the, the, they can't even, even do the accounting. They, they rely on hypervisor to, to do the accounting for them. Okay. Why still exists? Uh, the obvious reason is when the, the hypervisor is overcommitted. Uh, when the, the, the combined virtual machines on the hypervisor push uh, through more CPU work than there is physical, uh, physical CPUs to give, y you see still the less obvious fact is that sometimes there are, there, are, there are idle resources on the hypervisor and you still, and still the virtual machine experience still, which superficially should never happen, but, but it, it does. When we look at still of, the, of the, the virtual machines, we look at it from two different perspectives. One of them is you take an individual virtual machine and see if it experiences still. If, if, it, if it experiences still, uh, by, by looking at an individual virtual machine, you, you can know if it experiences performance problems. Uh, uh, still doesn't automatically translate into performance problems. Uh, can, from the other side, you can look at the, at the hypervisor and see if, uh, if still is a hypervisor wide, wide phenomena. You would look 
at things like statistical distribution of steel across virtual machines. I, I would like to, to emphasize that hypervisor itself never experienced steel. We, we're still looking at steel on I, I, within virtual machines. But uh, you, you look at things like, uh, are there VMs that experience steel? What's the distribution? Uh, the averages, outliers, uh, all the, the statistical stuff. Uh, another important thing is to look if the, the, the hypervisor has idle resources. Uh, this perspective is useful because it will tell you, it will tell you if uh, the virtual machines can be helped. Uh, the useful metric when, when looking for, uh, still from the perspective of an individual virtual machine is a sum of utilization and, uh, and, and steel. Uh, if it's close to 100, it means that the, the machine does experience performance, uh, performance problems. It's, uh, it would have used the, the, the stolen time had, it, had, the, had the steel wasn't there. If uh, the machine is relatively idle, mm, probably not. And again, wh when you look at the, at the, at the hypervisor from at, at steel from the, as, as a hypervisor-wide phenomena, uh, the question here is whether there are idle resources. If there are no idle resources, there is nothing that can be done. Uh, the, the, the only thing that can be done is migrate some of the, the, the virtual machines to another hypervisor to, to, to make it become, to, to, to make it less overcommitted. If there are, uh, there is still, but with idle, idle resources, then it's some kind of misconfiguration of your, your hypervisor and it can be helped in, in software. That's an example. Here we have 10 virtual machines, uh, all running top. And uh, we see, first of all, we, we see that the hypervisor itself is not overcommitted. It's uh, only 81% uh, per, uh, per, uh, use. However, there are several virtual machines that, that experience high level of steel, of steel, 20 and 30%. The other notable thing here is that uh, larger VMs are uh, experience hi higher, higher levers, le levels of steel than smaller ones. Es essentially, smaller ones mm -hmm. uh, uh, starve the, the larger uh, ones out. And uh, we will uh, let Vinny uh, explain why, why that. Thanks, Leo. Um, so this synthetic example that we have uh, created here to demonstrate you, um, this scenario was uh, visible on a portion of our fleet a while back and we started investigating what's what's happening what's like why the vms are facing steel when you have enough res resources in the system and the first thi first thing that uh, we noted was there was uh, migration threats that spiking meaning uh, some kind of migration is happening like new new uh, process migration is happening so uh, this is a thing that we have uh, we have understood from the fleet um, by default, a VM spans all the, all the NUMA nodes in the system. And Linux has this feature called automatic NUMA balancing, where it tries to keep the task and memory closer together. And uh, so it does it by two different methods. One is the memory follow CPU model, where the memory is migrated to the node where the task is running. And CPU follow memory model, where the uh, task is migrated to the node which uh, houses most of the memory of the task. Um, either, either way, it's, it's like uh, taking system time, CPU time, which could have been used by the VMs, and it turns out to be steel. So the way how to fix it, pin the VMs to specific <coughs> NUMA nodes and disable NUMA balancing. So you pin it to a specific NUMA node. All the VMs in the hypervisor, you pin it to a specific NUMA node, and you disable the NUMA balancing. There is no more migration happening, and theoretically, the steel should come down. And yes, the steel did come down. But as you can see, uh, the larger VMs, uh, the steel came down from 20 to 4%. Still there is steel. Why is it happening? That led us to the understanding and uh, investigation of this thing called process grouping. Um, by process grouping, I mean Linux has uh, a feature where it tries to group uh, related processes together uh, to allocate uh, resources to them. So there are multiple ways by which uh, the kernel does that. One is the C groups. There is thing called CPU C groups. Uh, 
So in libvirt by default, it creates one CPU C group per, uh, per VM. And the shares are allocated equal to all the C groups. So, um, and without changing any, any default parameters. So uh, I will explain it with a small, small example. So consider a eight CPU hypervisor. Uh, eight CPU means 800 percentage of CPU time. And you have three VMs here. One is the large VM with four vCPUs, and there are two smaller VMs with two vCPUs. So LiveWord creates three separate C groups, one for each VM, and uh, shares are allocated equally. So one by third of the share is given to each of these VMs. Every VM gets 266% of the share. Um, for the smaller VMs, out of the 266%, each vCPU gets uh, half the share. So it's like surplus, it's 100%, and there is theoretically no steal. But on the larger VM, uh, the 266 percentage is divided among four uh, vCPU threads, which is like 66 percentage. And, and uh, the 34 percentage turns out to be steel. So grouping is a problem. So how do we solve this? The, the immediate thing that uh, we tried to do was allocate shares equally, uh, sorry, uh, accordingly. So the larger VMs get larger shares, and smaller VMs get smaller shares. That's theor theoretically supposed to work, but it didn't work uh, as we expected in our, in our fleet because C groups were not scaling. Um, so Libvirt by default creates a deep hierarchy of a C group, and as the number of processes in the system increases, it, it, it was not scaling. So we were not seeing the result that uh, we were expecting. Second thing is like, let's disable the C group as a whole. So when you disable the C group as a whole, every, C, every task is considered equal by the scheduler, and it will be given equal shares. Uh, it's also supposed to work, but there were a couple of side effects. Uh, one thing is we lost the capability to control the VM CPU utilization. So our control plane had this feature of controlling individual uh, virtual machine CPU utilization, and uh, it, it sent the request to LibWord, and LibWord used the CPU C group to actually control the CPU resource, the uh, utilization, and we completely lost the capability. The less apparent thing was once you disable the C group, another feature called auto group kicks in. Auto group is another implicit uh, Linux feature where it tries to group processes based on the process uh, properties like uh, user who started the process, ses session ID, etc. So once you disable the C group, the auto group feature kicks in. It tries to group all the tasks in the VM into one, one C group, and we are back to square one. Same, same issue, larger VMs get penalized. So let's disable auto group. And that also did not help, because once you disable auto group, all the existing processes will still be in the auto group. Only the new process uh, gets, gets, uh, like starts without the C group, without the auto group. So that also did not help for the running VMs in the system then this is a working solution that we came up with. It's called per host C group. Libvirt by default creates per VM C groups, but now we have a single C group in the system which houses all the tasks of all the virtual machines in the hypervisor. And we have modified Libvirt to actually create a per host C group and move all the, all the virtual machines into that C group based on a tunable but we lost the capability of controlling the uh, um, uh, virtual machine CPU utilization. So we, the mo our, our modified Libvirt, what it does is when it, requ when it receives a uh, request from the control plane, it transparently moves the VM that has to be controlled out of the big C group and puts it in a smaller C group and applies all the parameters over there. And that way you just control the VM. And when you want to revert it back, the control plane sends a request, and Libvirt transparently moves it back to the bigger C group, and it, it becomes a part of the uh, big single C group. So this works, and the steel comes down. To give you a pictorial expla uh, explanation, yeah, I, I'll take the same example as before. So you have a 8 CPU hypervisor with 800% um, of CPU time, but now there's a single C group. So uh, the total shares will be divided by all the, all the C vCPUs equally. So one by eighth of the share will be received by all the, all the uh, vCPUs, and everyone gets 100% CPU. And theoretically, there is no steal. And this is the screenshot that we took from the same synthetic uh, workload that we had with all the fixes that I have mentioned applied in the system. The steal came down considerably. So if you see the larger VMs, have very very less steel now, and the steel steel is more or less uh, equal now. 
but still the steel is not down to zero, even though the system had idle resources. So I'll be handing it over to Leo to explain the last phenomena and also the f uh, practical implementation of all the strategies that I mentioned before. Over to Leo. So as Vinith mentioned, the steel doesn't get all the way down to zero, but uh, uh, all the re remaining steel is uh, attributable to, to idle VMs that run on, on, on really busy hypervisors. So under our definitions previously, it doesn't translate into performance problems because the, the, it's, a, it's a CFS feature to deprioritize uh, Idle, idle tasks on, on uh, when there is, uh, there is other, other work to be done. Uh, so our current understanding is that, that it doesn't translate into performance problems, so we, we'll, we, we stopped our investigation there. Uh, now let's talk about, uh, about implementation. As Vinith mentioned several slides ag ago, we fully uh, NUMA partition our systems. Essentially, we take all the virtual machines on the hypervisor, we divide them into two roughly equal piles, and each pile goes on a, on a, CP, on a, on a CPU socket with its corresponding NUMA nodes. Uh, the logical place to implement this, uh, this logic would be in the OS task scheduler. However, it's, first of all, it's hard. And, uh, we can, we, and we can get away with a much easier solution. Uh, we have a, a user space daemon that runs on the, on the hypervisors and uh, its uh, responsibility is to manage virtual resources uh, with regard to physical resources. Essen essentially, it uh, manages the, the vCPU and chemo threads and, and such and pins them to, to individual CPUs and NUMA nodes. Uh, the logic of NUMA partitioning is implemented there. Uh, the, the, the logic that, that, that I of two piles that, that I just uh, uh, just explained. Uh, the the reason that that we can get away with uh, with implementing it in user space is because we don't really need a GFI level resolution. The, the uh, realistically things change on the, on, on, the, on the hypervisor at the resolution of, uh, of hours, if, if we are talking about flow of uh, VM creates and VM destroys, or minutes if we are, if we are looking at, uh, at workload, and we are looking at, at the workload. Uh, so GFI level resolution is, is, is unnecessary, and we can get away with, with the implementing user space. Uh, uh, several things that, that Octopus does. First of all, NUMA partitioning. I, I just talked about it. The other thing is that since we, we do the, num the NUMA partitioning, we lose the, the load balancing capabilities of, uh, of uh, li Linux scheduler. Uh, one of the CPU sockets becomes busy when the other, the, the second one might remain relatively, uh, relatively idle. In this case, we, we, we migrate uh, virtual machines between c CPU sockets. This is a, hu a huge pain point I will, I will, t I will, I will talk about in the, in, in the following slides. Uh, the other responsibility of Octopus is uh, uh, we have plans that are so-called uh, CPU optimized offering. Essentially, uh, you, the, the virtual machines on this plan are not overcommitted. They, they, they receive 100% of of, C of, uh, of CPU 100% of the time. And it's, it's implemented by, by, by Octopus by, by, by pinning the, 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 the vCPUs to CPUs one to one. Uh, now about this, uh, these NUMA migrations. Uh, the primary pain point with the, these NUMA migrations is that in process, one of the NUMA nodes might become overcommitted. Uh, the way that we, we handle it is that, that we, during the NUMA migration, we temporarily dis uh, enable swap. Uh, uh, 
essentially before the migration we enable swap, we would do, do the migration, then, then we swap off in order to drain the, the RAM back into, uh, sorry, drain the swap back into physical RAM. Uh, this is, uh, uh, the, the it might sound li like, a, like a hack, but we are using here the fact that uh, the process of swapping off is not NUMA aware. Essentially, if you're moving, moving a virtual machine from node zero to node one, uh, and there is not enough room on, on, on node one, that then when you swap off, some of the, of, of the, the RAM that spilled over into, in, into swap might end up back in, 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 in the source node, in, in, in node zero. Uh, it might sound as a, as a, as a uh, as a bad thing, but the progress was made. Essentially, next iteration of Octopus will move more, uh, more uh, RAM, and, and the the process converges. That uh, that was uh, one big uh, pain point. Uh, the other thing is a very rare uh, situation of um kills during normal migrations. Es essentially, when when you move uh, a virtual machine from, again, from node, node zero to, to node one, and, and on node one there is another VM that allocates RAM really aggressively, uh, you might, uh, might not swap as, uh, as fast as, 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 as you might want, and, and, and the, the, the virtual machine might, might get, and get um killed. Uh, a slight variation of this problem is during the swap off phase. Uh, when swap is already disabled, then it, it might happen just because th there is no swap. This problem is made worse by the fact that the swap off is uh, is not not efficient. Uh, in in most extreme cases, we saw swap off taking hours to days, and it, it's obviously it's completely unacceptable for our uh, for 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 the flow I just described because you can start a new normal migration before the, 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 the previous ended. And also, again, as, as I mentioned, swap off might uh, expose us to an increased risk of uh, ooming. So, so taking days was out of the question. We revived a patch that was, uh, that was posted to LKML several years ago, and uh, now swap off is, uh, is much more efficient. Uh, this patch is currently under, under review in Uh, another thing that we are working on, it's very much work in progress, is to allow NUMA migration fail gracefully and, uh, as, as opposed to, to, to UMING. Uh, this is work in progress. It's not, uh, uh, when we get it operational, we'll, sh we'll surely post it to, to, to for review and inclusion in the, in the kernel. There are questions. We'll be happy to. Here, have it. Uh, so, did you visit uh, you guys have like VNF VMs that actually ran across the No, they, 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 they we don't. We don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't have bigger VMs. Uh, that span that need to span two two different human nodes. Do no, we don't. So we don't. We don't. Very, very explicitly, so we, we, we never no, never split split normal nodes because it's, uh, it's bad. Um, we we haven't we haven't looked into that kind of things yet because most of the steel that we saw saw in the fleet is on very idle droplets. So so once we ha have all these optimizations, all the busy dro busy v virtual machines are really happy. So so but but there is still more work to do. This is this is a con ongoing practice. Yeah, thanks for the pointer.
Um, so we started with top, went, <laughs> went, went to perf. So perf was really helpful in seeing the context switches and uh, the VM ins and the VM outs and what is happening. Once a VM once a VM thread becomes runnable, what other things were happening in between because be, uh, before it actually becomes running. So perf was really helpful for that. And uh, uh, for the Numa Numa stuff, we didn't we didn't we didn't use any like much much of the things were really apparent. So we did not use any debugging techniques to actually actually find out what's happening. Uh, sorry, can you can you repeat why, it? So, yeah. Uh, before balancing, what used to happen is uh, the the workload at the hypervisor is really dynamic. So there are there are uh, middleware that actually comes up uh, and does a lot of things to spawn the VM, and the VM becomes spikes at some time. So the memory becomes really unbalanced. And Linux constantly tries to move it because sometimes the memory moves to another node, and then it tries to move the process to that node. And sometimes the other thing happens be because of the dynamic nature of the hypervisor. So it's not only the VMs that is running; it's a lot of uh, secondary software also running on the system that makes it really dynamic. So without without actually pinning to a new node, we constantly saw this migration happening, and that was accounting for the steal. So you, you do Yeah. So, so, yeah. So we we account for the utilization of the virtual machines, and uh, then decide on which bucket it should it should fall, and then balance it using uh, using the users user space demand. Yeah, he'll be able to describe more about it. You basically said it. Uh, like <laughs> Hi. Um, so I was just trying to like figure out whether any anything can be done to make you know things work uh, out of the box a little bit better. So if I understand correctly, your your issue with Numa was really it was just moving processes around too much. It was moving memory around too much. So like maybe a knob that kind of makes it a little bit aggressive would have made a difference for you. Uh, Making the, 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 the what? I'm sorry. You know the autonoma thing that that uh, just just plays with uh, stats and and tries to observe process behavior. The thing is that uh, uh, moving it in the first place is uh, is kind of wrong. It, it, it doesn't it, it, like it, I mean it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily need. It's not needed. Uh, we, we, we can we, we can just split and, and, and it will it will be all, all the remix will, will will be local. We, we saw that that uh, uh, a lot of trashing. Uh, essentially, you, you would see the, the virtual machine hopping on. Yeah. So like, if you maybe just just make it a bit ag less aggressive, that would so maybe help. Uh, one other thing is the dynamicity of the virtual machine. Sometimes it spikes. Sometimes it doesn't spike. So once once we have it settled into two different human nodes. Sometimes one new node gets overcommitted uh, because because of the CPU utilization of, of all the VMs on that node. At the same time, the other node might be idle. So even if even if you make it kind of static and then make it less aggressive, uh, VMs will be facing performance issues. So we need to have a constant way of monitoring whether the node becomes overcommitted and then balance based on based on what is happening. Okay. Does that does that answer and your question? Maybe and and second question is, uh, so you mentioned scalability issues with, with C groups. Mm -hmm. Is that solved with C groups V2? That's what it was supposed to address. Uh, so or is that also with V2? Uh, v V2 is like uh, that's that's a good question. V2 we are currently testing it out uh, to see what uh, how much of a difference is there. But we don't have any any uh, real concrete uh, results to actually show it here. But yeah, that that's it. That. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? All right. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.